Debugging Tools for Web Developers. The purpose of this presentation is to show you some of the tools that are available through the browser to assist you in debugging your JavaScript applications. Since JavaScript is executed by the browser, such as uh, Firefox or Chrome, the debugging tools are a part of the browser. With this presentation, right now, I just want you to make the decision which browser you will be using as your main testing browser. Though you do need to test in multiple browsers because what may work in Firefox may not work in IE. The initial testing, just select one browser and be aware of the tools that are available. Download any tools that you need or any browsers that you need. And then as we go through the semester, I'll give you more hints on how to use these debugging tools. This is just a getting started presentation. Firefox is actually my preferred browser for debugging and I think you would find it similar for many web developers. However, in the last year, most browsers have come out with very good web developer tools. So uh, I think Firefox is just kind of grandfathered in with many web developers because uh, they, it was one of the first good browser to offer some good tools. Uh, to access the tools in Firefox, many of them are called add-ons. In fact, if you look at the add-ons available, there are so many, way more than just web developers add-ons. But if you would click the search box when you're on the add-on page, you will see that there are many, many uh, add-ons available. My two favorite uh, tools in Firefox is, first of all, the Error Console. And the Error Console is not an add-on. So if you're running your code and your code just does not even seem to be doing anything, then you probably have what's called a syntax error. And Firefox's error console actually will show you what line that syntax error may be on. So it's a good tool to, to pinpoint the line of the syntax error. Then you can go back to your source code and uh, modify it. Firebug is an add-on that you would need to download, and it is the tool that I use for debugging script for myself or for, or for students. And uh, what it does is it will open the source code, and then you have many features such as adding breakpoints or stepping through your code line by line to figure out where your error is occurring at. Let's take a look at some of the Firefox tools. So here I have um, a page open that, let's say, has some JavaScript in it. So if you choose Tools, uh, you will see here is the Error Console here. And it will open up a uh, menu. And it will show you where, you know, the error that has occurred. And uh, an error occurred on a web page that I was uh, at earlier. And you can actually click on the line and it will take you to the line number of the error. Okay, this one happens to be an error in the CSS. Um, at, as you're going from page to page to page on the actual internet, there are actually many errors. So what I normally like to do when I start debugging is clear all the old errors and then just open my local page and it will be only my errors that I will see um, in this window. Okay, let's take a look at how to get that fire bug. From Tools Add-ons, okay, and here are the add-ons that I have installed, okay, and uh, you can click on the Get Add-ons button here and browse all add-ons. And like I said, here's a search box right here. So you could just type web developer. You would could see many, many of the uh, web developer add-ons. Or over here, the add-ons are categorized. So you could choose web development if you want to see what kind of add-ons there are. So there's more than one type, like a Fire PHP, JSON View, View Chart, many types of add-ons. What I'm going to have you do if you want to use Firebug is type Firebug right here. 
in the search box and it will bring up that fire that page for the firebug add-on. Okay, and here it is, and then you will click to add to Firefox and download it. After you've done that, you may need to close Firefox and reopen. I'm not quite sure, but once you do that, you will see that Firebug is right there. And so if I would go back to my jigsaw puzzle and I went to Tools and Firebug and open Firebug, you will see that what it does is at the bottom of the page, it opens the Firebug panel. And in the panel, many times it says script panel, panel was inactive. Come down here. So this is where you're going to see your script under the script panel and enable it and reload it. Reload your page. And there's no JavaScript on that page to debug. So that's external JavaScript. And uh, in the HTML, you can go see your HTML and um, perhaps click on one of these links. And that will, we'll step through this later on how you can uh, use Firebug. We'll go into a lot more depth, but you can see, you can look at your style and see exactly how all your pages that you're using to make your web page work together. Now let's take a look at the tools in Safari. Safari is the browser you're usually going to find on the Mac, but there is a Windows version available. And there's some nice tools in Safari including an emulator. So you can use, have only one browser open and say emulate IE4. I don't know if it's IE4, maybe that's, that's too low, but emulate IE7 or emulate Opera. So it saves you from having to open up your browser, multiple browsers, but still see how your web page renders in different browsers. So by default, uh, the developer menu is not available, but it's not a download. All you need to do is go to the gear icon on the right side of the address bar, and it's a drop-down box. And uh, from that drop-down menu, you're going to select Preferences. And there will be a bunch of different tabs across the top. Choose the Advanced tab. And there then at the very bottom of the advanced tab, it will show you a checkbox with the label show developer menu in menu bar. Put a check in there and that will enable the developer menu to show. Then to access the developer menu, right to the left of that little gear icon is a page icon. And uh, also opening another drop down box and click on the development, the developer menu for the developer options. So let's take a look at Safari here. Chrome, and of course it's the last one I have open there, Safari. Okay, and here is that gear and the drop down menu. And here's preferences. And I've already got the advanced tab selected here, but show develop menu in the menu bar, I have a check. So I've already enabled it, but that's what you'll need to do and then simply close it out. It could be that you may need to close Safari and reopen. And then on this page menu here, you will see develop. And there's a sub menu with many, many different features available to you. But if you wanted to work with your JavaScript, then I would select Start Debugging JavaScript. And here we go, kind of similar to Firebug. In fact, almost similar type of um, tabs here that you can select. But here's your Script tab. Maybe this is a little bit better than the Firebug. Notice that um, JavaScript can be external have external files like CSS can have external files. And this page, Kinder Kindergarten, has two external files that's working together to help do the puzzle. And uh, so I can look at the different external files, okay, and looked at the script. And we'll show you later how you can step through this and help you debug. So very good uh, 
feature there in Safari. Chrome, if you really love Google Chrome, these tools are also available. So uh, in Chrome, you will go to the right um, of the address bar and there is a wrench. Now, one thing that's different between cr with Chrome and Safari compared to Firefox and IE is they don't have a menu bar. And I believe the thought is there is we're going to save more space for the browser window by not taking up space at the top of the window with menu bars. So they have just those two small icons to the right of uh, your address bar to access these features. Well, click on the wrench and you're going to open the drop down menu and you're going to select tools and there will be developer tools at the very bottom of the page. So let's take a look at Chrome. Okay, so here is same page in Chrome and here's that wrench. Okay. Tools right here and then choose developer tools. There's also a JavaScript console that's very similar to the error console in Firefox. And very similar, a panel opens at the bottom of the page here in Chrome, uh, showing you the script. Yeah, showing you the script here. And then you can select which of the two external JavaScript files you want to work with. And then, uh, and then work on debugging. Um, the last one we're going to look at is Internet Explorer. And Internet Explorer is probably many web developers' least favorite tool as far as working with testing your script initially and getting the bugs out. And the reason is, whenever you're testing your script that you're writing in your HTML, it's probably saved locally on your hard drive somewhere. So it's a local file. And IE considers it a security risk. So every time you open your HTML file locally in IE, up pop this information bar. Um, and you have to click on it and say allow block content to test your script. Many times when you're testing your script, you're making a change, you're going back to the browser to see if it works, and then in IE, you have to click it and allow the block content again. And then you've got to make another change, come back, and then in IE, you're continually having that information bar come up and say allow block content. So that's just an extra step developers don't need, and you don't have to do that in the other browsers we were just looking at. But to add, if you want to use IE for debugging, uh, to access the debugger tools, go to the menu and uh, tools menu and choose developer tools. And your script will open in a new window. So let's see if I've got my IE. That's Firefox. Looks like it's right here. Okay. So notice that this is the information bar I was telling you about. So none of the JavaScript is going to execute until you click on this and say allow block content. Every time you do you open to test, you have to do that. Just some extra steps I don't want to do. But here's tools. And under tools, I have developer tools. And you'll notice instead of a new a panel at the bottom of the screen, the developer tools in IE opens a new window where you can take a look. Um, similar, you know, you can look at the CSS. This is a page has, you can look at the script for this page. So very similar, but it is in a new window. And um, I like this window, it works fine. I just don't like that information bar coming up. There is a way to stop that information bar if you don't wanna use that information bar. Okay, so that kind of wraps up this, inf this uh, PowerPoint here about uh, the tools available and we'll uh, cover more as the week goes on about exactly how to use those tools.